Hi STEM enthusiasts and welcome to the last episode of Scientix TV of 2022. We recently had the Scientist Conference taking place online. Now this year, this fourth International Scientist Conference, I was all the time in front of the camera, so I didn't get the chance to see what was going on behind the scenes. We had for that Barbara Cuarta, who organized the conference from the very beginning to the last detail. Now, Barbara, how was it? Hi, Agueda. Well, the conference was an amazing experience for me, really wonderful. It was a success. We had more than, uh, you know, 1,000 people, 1,200 people actually connecting from more than 50 countries from Europe and from across the world. Uh, but this was only possible um, thanks to a, a great team effort we had here at the office. So the whole science, scientific team worked for uh, months to organize this big event. And it was also great fun to work together, I have to say. That's the thing. It's, it's all about the collaboration, isn't it? So it's not only the people at the European School Net, but all the scientists, ambassadors, national contact points, the ministers of education, all our industry partners. So. What, how was it? How, what did you really enjoy? What yeah, did you like? Exactly, it was uh, it was an amazing uh, you know teamwork uh, inside and outside the scientific team in a, in a way. It was um, this was a, an important moment I think to celebrate the scientific community, especially after twelve years. So we managed to bring together, connect, and engage all these uh, actors that are part of this community and that uh, in a way benefit from, uh, from the existence of the Scientix community. Yeah, it's, it's uh, 12 years now. This is the fourth Scientix conference. It's the first time we were organizing it online. And the thing is, one of the things I found most difficult when I, we were organizing the others is that we had these people that wanted to come to the conference and we had to say no. So this time we pretty much said yes to everybody that wanted to join. That was a success. So, yeah, it was a success, but um, yeah, honestly, it was also a challenge to organize a fully online event after the success. I mean, the big success of the previous editions. Yeah, we invested a lot uh, on this um, very interactive online platform, allowing uh, you know participants to to meet together to do networking activities to really engage in polls there were active polls throughout the conference there, were, there was a, a very nice uh, poster uh, gallery um, linked to a voting system so throughout the conference people could could really vote uh, the best posters the posters that were interesting for them so yes, this this was indeed uh, something that helped us to to keep this this interaction uh, among the participants. That sounds really good. We are going to show you a few highlights today, and you'll be able to see everything, all the recordings on the Scientix portal as well. Welcome to the fourth International Scientix Conference. Nine out of ten jobs will require digital skills. I think space has something uh, that makes us all dream. The jobs have changed within last years and they will change even more. We continue to maintain a focus on building premier technology products, software and services while being driven by a higher purpose to create an inclusive future for all. 30 Scientix ambassadors that stepped in to say, well, we don't know what Scientix is, we don't know what we're doing, but we're there. We can help improve STEM education. Scientix ambassadors are local contact points of Scientix. They are the ones that make up our teacher panel. And well, without them, Scientix would definitely not be the same. The goal of this competition was to raise awareness of the negative effects of the ever increasing climate changes on Earth. STEM education is a tool for covering the gaps in the continuously divided world. And if we can find some sort of common ground where we start the discussion, rather than starting on the, of the point where we, are, we have our entrenched political positions, then I think that's probably a more supportive and more compassionate place to, to, to try and have a discussion about science. From April 2023, Scientix will continue as an initiative of European Schoolnet. You will be able to see the full recording on the Scientix portal as well as videos on all each of those sessions as well of, as all the posters and presentations.
Now, that's about the program. So how was it creating this program? What did we have there? Well, the program of the conference was very rich. We had more than 120 contributions to the conference, um, different keynote speakers, and also 32 parallel sessions, eight workshops, two roundtables, and uh, more than 90 posters. Then we had representatives from uh, um, ministries of education, so policy makers, uh, industry partners, also from the STEM Alliance, uh, uh, we had researchers, uh, experts, and of course, amazing teachers, including our uh, scientific ambassadors from all over the world. Organizing a conference of this type has a lot of moving parts, but you've done a really good job of making sure that everything was organized perfectly. Even though we had people from all across the world, we even had someone connecting from Mexico from a police station at 3 a.m. in the morning. Michael, how were you? How did you end up there? That, that's an excellent question. Uh, so I ended up in Mexico to join uh, fellow scientific ambassador Diana Rubio, uh, who's a scientific ambassador in Carretero, Mexico. I was presenting uh, low-cost experiments at a conference and then was invited to some rural areas to help increase access to hands-on science. Uh, I made a point of insisting that I need to have a good internet connection uh, to join the scientists conference. And it was only once I ended up in this small village, I was told that a good internet connection can only be found at the police station. Uh, daytime in Europe is the middle of the night in Mexico, so that's why it was three in the morning I needed to walk through the cold to an unheated police station in the mountains of Mexico. Were you connected from inside the police station or outside? Oh, no, I was, I, I was inside. They left the door unlocked because they have on-duty officers who sleep on the floor. So if someone was trying to break in, they would presumably wake up and notice or care. <laughs> okay, I'm glad to hear that you were doing it from inside the police station, but not inside a cell. Now, Michael Gregory is one of our scientists ambassadors, and he's going to be sharing a few experiments. If I understand correctly, you're going to be starting from in the dark. So you're going to tell us a bit about different activities. So Michael, what are you doing in the dark? Okay, so I'm starting in the dark to show light. So at first I'm going to show some highlights from Jose Benito's experiments. Uh, he was presenting from the University of Vigo on hands-on color. So I have three colored lights, a red, blue, and uh, green light here. And I'm just going to use them to illuminate a souvenir doll that I brought back from Mexico, a, a Lele doll. And we're going to observe Lele's shadows to see what we can gather about primary and secondary colors of light. So as I bring this in close here, we can observe a couple of different colors. We can observe a dark blue and a red shadow, which are directly from the beams of light where the two other colors are blocked. But we can also see a number of secondary colors. We can see cyan, yellow, and in between the red and the blue, we can see magenta, which is where two of the light beams, but not all three, have combined. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do playing around with colored lights uh, to explore primary and secondary colors. Another great thing I saw from Jose Benito was using pure colors of light. So I'm going to use this red to illuminate these tomatoes. And these cherry tomatoes in the beautiful red light all look just about the same color. And they look a similar color to the white background. So they look fairly white because just like the red, they're reflecting most of the red light back. Now, if we change uh, this over to the blue light, we can see an opposite effect. So in blue light, these tomatoes appear black or purplish because they're absorbing all of the blue light unlike the table, which is reflecting the blue light back, so they appear darker. But when we cycle through colors, we can actually see we have different colors of tomato here, and we can only see that in white light where they're reflecting different colors differently. If we see it only in blue light, they're absorbing all the blue light, and they're reflecting most of the red light, so we can't differentiate the same as we can see in regular colors. I'm going to use these same tomatoes, uh, to repeat one of the experiments shown by Julia and, uh, and Javier, 
from the European Geosciences Union to model how they measure porosity of rocks in the soil. So here I have the tomatoes in a glass, and I'll turn the lights back on for this. We don't need fancy colors for this. So a glass of tomatoes, and this glass is more or less full. But as you can see, there's some empty space there. Uh, the same thing happens in rocks, soil, and dirt. And to fill out the empty space, I'm just going to use water. And we'll see it can hold a surprisingly large amount of water in these empty spaces. That amount of empty space is called the porosity of a rock. And to measure the porosity, I'm going to use the same water, pour it out into a measuring glass. And we see we have just over 10 centiliters of water that filled the empty space in between. Now, if we add the tomatoes and we see the total volume, that's just above 20. And so about half of the space was empty space that was filled up. That half or 50% is the porosity of this sample. So this sample had a porosity of 50%. Uh, and they showed that and a number of other wonderful uh, hands-on geoscience experiments. Uh, that's a sample of two of my favorite things I picked up from, uh, from the conference, but there's lots more to see, so I'm excited that the recordings are online. I'm going to catch up on the ones I missed. Thank you very much. I really liked both that you connect different experiments to address light, space, uh, volumes, and on top of that, you're connecting different experiments from different scientists, ambassadors, and other stakeholders. So thank you very much for joining us today, Michael, and happy to have you back in Europe. Oh, happy to be back and happy to be here. Thank you. So we had from experiments to digital transformations, and we did all that in addition with two round tables, one on educational technologies and one on integrated STEM teaching. Now, this brings us to the future, of course, so we will be going and working on educational technologies with the Empower Ed project that Barbara will be coordinating on behalf of European Schoolnet. And we also have the work ahead of us on how to improve STEM education and creating a roadmap on STEM education where we have the different projects working together, including the SEER, Road Steamer, and SENSE. Now, we look forward to seeing all those work projects in action. And before we go, thank you very much, Barbara, for the great work you did on coordinating the fourth International Scientists Conference. Thank you, Agada, and thank you to all those that made it possible. Thank you very much. It's been a great first year of Scientix TV. We have learned a lot, but we had great fun. Hello, STEM enthusiast. What do you want? And then my brain is just like... I have to say that I never looked at this camera. <laughs> Tulia created I will tell you my life. So thank you Tulia, there's a plane passing by. <laughs> On Scientix TV. That around, across the world that actually uh, that, that, that. back to school campaign that we are currently running, I can't where you can see STEM through no the world through STEM classes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why this happens? <laughs> it happens because it's, <laughs> it's too complicated. I cannot. Twitter, social, uh, Twitter. Ah. Now, hi. Why do I say with now? We, you should check out the STEMI career projects report. You should check the STEMI careers job profile. <laughs> STEMI repository of STEM job professionals, the STEMIT professionals job, the STEMIT STEM professionals repository. <laughs> <laughs> so we had lots of fun, as you could see. Now, we also got lots of feedback and we listened. Our next episodes in 2023 will be including a lot more tips, resources, and activities that teachers can use in the classroom. We can't wait for 2023 to do it all again. Thank you very much for joining us and joining the Scientix TV, where you can see the world through STEM glasses.
and a big thanks to everybody in this, at the European School that was able to join us for the Scientix TV, something I've been wanting to do for many years. So very big thanks to Jacques, Rocio, Chanel, Celia, Julia, Eddie, and everybody else involved in Scientix TV and every, every single one of our episodes. See you next year.